All right, we're recording. So thank you guys for jumping on. My name is Brandon Cunningham, and I'm super excited to have you guys with us tonight. It's going to be really fun. Um, and you're in for a treat because we got Gretchen Tresaurus and Jessica Adams with us tonight. Um, they've graciously, uh, I don't know if they volunteered. I kind of drafted them, twisted their arm. Um, but super qualified to share the information. I'm going to introduce them in a second. I'm, I'm excited about this challenge. Uh, well, first of all, I think a lot, a lot of us like to be challenged. I'm the type of person, like if I don't have a goal, when it comes to my diet, I kind of don't diet if I don't have a goal. So um, I kind of like, you know, doing things that forces my behavior. Like I need someone to f tell me whether it's a little voice in my head or, you know, my friends doing things better than me. I like, I like to have challenges. So we're going to have a challenge over the next four weeks. We're calling it the quarantine reset. I think a lot of people would like to reset some things. Um, and uh, maybe we'll talk about this from the experts here. I think for me personally, when stress levels go up, sometimes you kind of go to food as comfort a little bit, and that's not good. And I did that. Uh, I know a lot of people probably have done that. And so it's time to reset. Um, in Florida, it's full out summertime. So that means we're on the boat and the beach and people got cameras all the time. And you're like, oh my gosh, don't post that picture. So in four weeks, we're going to be looking fine. Y'all can post all the pictures because we're going to bust some weight off here. And uh, it's not all about weight. Um, some of you probably don't need to lose any weight, but maybe you just don't feel as good as you would like to feel. And uh, that is, is certainly uh, going to be right up your alley, what we're going to be doing um, over the next four weeks. And so I want to jump into this. And uh, we'll elaborate as we go. Let me introduce these ladies that are here tonight. And listen, they run a gym and uh, they're probably exhausted right now because what time do you guys, uh, what time is the gym open, guys? First class of the day is 5.15 a.m. So that person has to arrive by 5. Yep. And then that means you're there, what, 4, 4.30? I mean, that somebody's means, there uh, early. Yeah, my alarm goes off at 3.15 to arrive on time. <laughs> but that wasn't this morning. No, not this no, morning. We're okay. I have a 6.15 <laughs> client. It wasn't a big deal. But you've done it. You've done it. I know yeah. you've done it. And here's how, how I know they've done it. I <laughs> met these ladies in a gym. Okay, so I moved to Florida in 91. And somewhere around 93 is where I think I met Gretchen um, at a gym. And she was just the top dog. Like everybody knew she was the top dog trainer. And I just kind of, you know, I didn't do the trainer thing, but I knew she was there and I knew, I knew everybody loved her classes. And then I started, I guess cycling became a thing. When did, what year did cycling become a thing? When was that? It was, uh, let's see. I, it was mid nineties, I believe. Yeah. Mid to late. Yeah. yeah I'm thinking mid nineties, the spin classes started to pop up and I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna I'm do that because you know I wasn't kind of I wasn't into the aerobic thing like that wasn't my my <laughs> deal. So um, Gretchen used to kick my butt and she would like and she'd be like like give me the look and I'd be like I'm working out, chill out, I'm sweating. <laughs> and so um, it was all good. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, Jessica as well. I met Jessica at the same gym. I don't know what the year gap was. It wasn't a lot of years in between there. Um, and then um, because of that relationship, we've stayed in touch. And uh, since then, because of corporate takeovers and corporate mergers and all this craziness, um, they decided, oh, how many years now has it been? Three, four years that you guys have gone out on, on your own and got your own four. It will be four in August. Okay. So, okay. My, well, my actually, it was April, but yeah. The TikTok clock in my head's not too far <laughs> off. pretty good. Yeah. Something. So um, you guys are in for a treat tonight because um, it's been their lifestyle for many years, but you guys see it all. Like I I'm sure it's probably almost comical to you guys like January 1st, right? And like, <laughs> you know, it's, you, you see all these, these cycles and seasons and that's what we kind of want to talk about tonight a little bit. And I would say these guys for sure understand this, that we're all so different. 
Some people don't want to exercise. Some people want to exercise a lot so they can eat what they want. I kind of fall in that category. Like I'll go burn 2000 calories so I can eat 2000 calories. I know it's not good, but I kind of do that sometimes. Um, and uh, then there's some people in between. So tonight we're just going to be making some suggestions. Um, you know, I would say that if, if you really want to maximize your health, you probably need some individual coaching when you guys say that, like, you know, everybody's blood types are different. Desires are different. Um, so three things we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about food, nutrition. We're going to talk about exercise uh, and moving your body. And we're also going to talk about maximizing some of the technology that's out there to help us in the process. Um, I'm not going to call it easier. I'm just going to say there's some things that you can do. Um, from a product standpoint that can maximize uh, your goals, endeavors, so on and so forth. So uh, with no more to do, let's jump into this. Uh, so guys, let's talk about nutrition a little bit. Um, what a, give, give us some general thought um, that you guys have around nutrition for people coming into with the idea of a, you know, a four-week blitz. Okay, go for it. All right. <clears throat> what we've learned over the many years is that paying particular attention to macronutrients, which is defined by your protein sources, your fat sources, and your carbohydrate sources in a balanced arrangement is very important um, for nutrition success. If you eliminate one of those, the balance gets skewed and the results are affected typically negatively. When you are exercising to gain muscle, protein is an important component and carbohydrates are equally important and fats are important for giving you the sense of satisfaction. And I'm talking about maybe only eight grams of fat in a meal or something, depending on what your caloric budget is for that particular meal. But it's not a gob of shortening. It's not a gob of peanut butter, peanut butter or butter or <laughs> coconut oil, whatever. It's some to create, to complement the other two so that you have a nutritional balance in that particular meal. So you're not just eating carbs at one meal and then just eating protein at another, but each meal has a balance to it. Okay. That's cool. Cause I was going to ask you like, you kind of lost them in there. And when you said micronutrients or macronutrients, I'm like, Macro. what? Yeah. what, what, say what? Yeah. So protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Okay, so you're saying every meal should have a little bit of all of it? We have found that that creates a, a better uh, landscape for success. Okay, all right. I'll interject something. One size doesn't fit all. Yeah. I saw in some of the comments, you know, they're going keto, they're going to do paleo. Those are good options, and some work better with those options than others. Mm -hmm. We're talking general, and I have found personally following and paying attention to your macronutrients will give you more sustainable long-term fitness and health and sustained weight rather than this up and down. Like right. I know this is a blitz. We're going to kind of give some direction to hit it hard, but you still want to maintain those gains after the fact. Yeah. That's what because we see that a lot, right? Like someone can go out and lose five, 10, 15 pounds in a month by just going really hardcore. But after that month's over, they know they can't sustain it. And then sometimes yeah. they gain it back and then plus some, yep. exactly. right? Yep. And so we don't, we don't want that to happen. We kind of want this to be a, a reset where we maybe can get back to where we were and then maybe make some decisions long-term. So I know for me, when it comes to diet guys, um, as we were talking, you know, just a few minutes ago, prepping for this, I kind of know my shortcomings. I mean, I, and I think a lot of people watching this kind of know their shortcomings for me, um, I, I love good food and I don't, I don't like cut back sometimes on the ingredients of good food. Um, and so I know there's high dense calories and some of that stuff. Alcohol for me, um, I don't, I mean, I don't drink every day, um, but I know that alcohol consumption is, isn't it got a lot of sugar in it and it slows down your metabolism. Talk about alcohol for just a second. Like, just reducing that, what does that do for the body? Well, bear in mind, there are seven calories in one gram of alcohol, mm -hmm. as opposed to protein, which has four calories in one gram, and carbohydrates that has four calories in one gram. 
there's nine calories in one gram of fat. So alcohol is in the upper ranges and a little bit, it's calorically dense, but it's still empty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it does turn to sugar. And if you don't go burn it off right away, guess what it gets stored as? Fat. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> like the red wine at night, like, so let, let's say someone's like, I just got to have a drink. I mean, I'm, I'm just being Not a real, like, I'm just being a realist here. Yeah. Is, is, it, it, it is like, what's the worst drink at night? Uh, okay, this is opinion. Okay, white but, Russian, yeah. pina colada. <laughs> okay, no, yeah. like sweet wine, beer, or liquor. Let's go simple. I um, would just personally wine or some clear, shot. yeah, liquor with a clean mixer. Axio, and just, vodka is a, just a, shot. <laughs> a, little, a shot if you're gonna do it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just so we're gonna have some fun with this because, guys, I mean, you know, it's the thing. All sweet. right. It's sodas, it's yeah, that's what this really is, kills it. I, I can't say that this has any scientific backing, <laughs> okay? <laughs> what, what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. it's common sense. If you're having a mixed drink and it's full of cream or sugary juices, right, and fruits and all that, you are increasing the calories and the sugar and everything tenfold. Okay, yeah. so here's yeah. another thing I know that I got to watch. Um, and, and talk to this, like in the morning, I'll do some shakes and I'll use fruit and I really don't count the fruit sometimes. And I know if I don't do that, like I can end up with a lot of calories in the morning. So yeah, yeah. Um, way, okay. I'm going to segue into an approach to your meal planning is to plan what you eat and then eat what you plan. Having it set up ahead of time can really set you up for success. So designating a day or two in the week when you're going to prepare, let's say your proteins, for example, or um, yeah, like you're going to, and I'm not saying that you have to cook a whole family pack of chicken breasts, but enough for you to get you through the next couple of days. And yes, can it become boring? Yeah, it can, but you can season things differently and have I don't know, some smoky flavored chicken here and maybe a lemon pepper here. So you can give yourself some variety, cook a gross amount of, of rice or jasmine rice or, I mean, we happen to have basmati at the moment because that's all that was at Costco during the COVID rush. <laughs> so we got a 20 pound bag of basmati and guess what we've been eating? Basmati. <laughs> Just remember to rinse it, okay? Otherwise it gets really gummy. So yeah, keep those things you can, um, roast vegetables, have those on hand, have prepare a large salad to have on hand that will last you a couple of days, not too much, or it gets rusty and nasty, but enough to get you through those couple of days and plan what you eat, then eat what you plan. Because if you pack your food, you already have it. There's nothing you have to fly by the seat of your pants by. Or like you said, in making your shake, if you have a plan of what you're going to use that night before, or at least in the morning, you know, I'm going to have Berries and blueberries and then I mean there are weight amounts that you can maybe go by but we're not talking so super strict just know you're going to have that know you're going to put your protein powder in it right are you using water are you using unsweetened almond milk just have a plan yeah. going into it rather than just throwing a bunch of stuff in and going now I am a little um anal retentive <laughs> and we all know this I'm not going to get into the biology of that, but just real, uh, very particular and granular the way you say. So I have prepared through an app, a recipe that I follow each day. So I know that I'm, I weigh out 20 or 30 grams of oatmeal. And I know that I'm going to weigh out 10 grams of coconut oil. That's going to go into that shake. So the recipe is the same. And if I'm changing up a fruit, I might just have to measure that one variable to how much papaya versus strawberries are going to give me the same number of carbohydrates. So I'll ask you to do this so we can kind of keep moving when it comes to okay. nutrition. Will you, um, over the next four weeks, just periodically drop some recipes in for us so that we can kind of Perfect. see, give us some guidance there. So we'll be looking for some of that so we can. I'll give of... one quick tip. If we're going more nutritionally and like Gretchen talked about the macros. Every time you sit down to eat something, eat, drink it, snack, meal, I use that all interchangeable. Do you have a protein represented? Number one. Do you have a carbohydrate represented? Do you have a fat? 
And here's a tip. Peanut butter is not protein, you no, guys. It's fat. It's fat. <laughs> protein and carbohydrate in it, but it's predominantly a fat. If you look at the label, the biggest thing on there is fat. But that's the rule of thumb. And then you also have to watch the milk. Sugar and milk. And it's, yeah. But protein, carb, fat, every time you put something in your mouth will yield you some of the better results that you can that, find out there. That we've observed. And those those types of approaches are very sustainable, you guys. And so, oh. I mean, it goes without saying, um, everyone should pro you always hear water, 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 right? And so, um, is are different people like you have these standards? I've heard take your weight, cut it in half, and that's how many ounces of water you should be drinking. Um, is there? I don't have an answer. There, I mean, a general rule of thumb people can drink up to a gallon a day. I mean, truly. And that's what a lot of health professionals will recommend. I personally, I don't think I get a gallon in. Maybe recently, I do. Maybe recently, because we're doing a lot more exercise and outside, oh, yeah. and it's hot and sweaty. Um, but maybe two liters to a gallon, depending who you are, could maybe make it work. So maybe, do you have any hacks for making like non-water drinkers like me i hate drinking water because i gotta go to the bathroom Axio. i hate drinking water because i have to go to the bathroom so well, oh, yeah well, sorry so <laughs> yeah that, that's me too but <laughs> uh, catheter depends <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so here's what here's what lynette does and i love it when she does she has this big picture in the refrigerator of our our purified water and she'll mix up different stuff in the water you know different fruits or okay, we're using it yeah yeah that's great um i'll mix axio and i like carbonation you guys that that's me i do not because i would go to a soda because it's carbonated not because it's a soda so i've actually got uns unsweetened but like lemon sparkling water or grapefruit or whatever and i'll put an axio in that and it's kind of like a soda it truly is i enjoy that personally for those that don't know what Axio is, a very clean, nootropic, we call it brain food, no more than 15 calories. You can get it caffeinated, uncaffeinated. We'll talk to whoever puts you on the Zoom, ask them about Axio. They'll kind of fill you in on that. So yeah, yeah. let's jump over to any final thoughts on nutrition and diet before we go to exercise? I just want to address one question in the comments. Someone asked, are we counting vegetables as carbohydrates? Yes, yes we are. Certain ones are waterier than others, and the ones that you can consider the watery ones would be the lettuces, mushrooms, um, uh, cucumbers, while well, zucchini is very watery. These types of things you can have an abundance of yeah. them because when you cook them, you can start out with a forest of zucchini, but you're going to end up with this like. <laughs> no kidding we do a, we do a stir fry sometime and it's like heaping and when it's yeah, done there's like this much at the bottom like right where to go like spit like spinach does that you your pan's full and there's a little yep. yeah and carbohydrates are not the devil you no. guys you need them for energy we say vegetables are carbs yes but i'm talking the rice is the you know the sweet potato the oatmeal those are good mm -hmm. things those yeah. are good things if you're taking that moderate approach eat them you'll benefit from it bread bread's bad though right moderation I'll moderation that case. it doesn't have to be that bad you right. i mean you're not eating a loaf at the time are you i hope not no i'm not eating oh. a loaf but okay homeboy loves some bread i'm just gonna say so have a meal with bread but also have some protein with it please and a little bit of fat have it balanced right and have some watery okay. vegetables to round it out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right let's go to exercise um and in my like i bet i met you guys at the gym so i exercise and i kind of told you guys why like i like to eat so a lot of times i'll work out just so i can eat i've stayed pretty much the same size for the last 20 years um a lot of it's because i spend five days a week exercising but we know some people hate exercise and they're not going to do it that's cool so i mean can you I, I mean it's rhetorical we know you can lose weight and feel better without ever doing any cardio right mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. And so there's some people that do it moderately. There's some people that do it a lot. So talk about, let, let's start with the people that don't exercise. Um, what might should they be doing? Um, if they want to do this with a pure diet, what are some things? Because maybe sometimes people think exercise is like jogging or a treadmill. What are some people can kind of, what's a nice entry into exercise? Walking. <laughs> 
just walking for pleasure. It's this time of year. It's gorgeous in most parts of the country or most parts of the um, North America. So walk. If it's humid, walk early or walk late. If you get eaten by mosquitoes, walk <laughs> early. Um, and break it up. If you yeah. are new to exercise and you're afraid, God, I, I can't walk for 30 minutes yet. That's out of the question. She uses this great example. Walk to your mailbox and back in the morning, right? Yeah. Or chunk it up 10 minutes in the morning, do 10 minutes in the evening after the and sun sets. 10 minutes three times a day and there's mm -hmm. your 30. Break it up. So here's what I'm doing. Here's a, here's a little hack I'm going to share with you guys that, I, that I'm enjoying. And it's actually, it's been helped me more productive in business. Um, instead of just being stuck in the office, doing phone calls or Zooms, I'll put earphones in and I walk. I just walk my street during conference yeah. calls and Zooms. Um, and I'm moving. Right. I feel better. I do. Like I really, I can feel the blood going to my brain versus just sitting down. We have a client that is always on conference calls and he will pace even in his home or around his pool. He gets over 10,000 steps. He's going on like day 200 of the year, like seriously. Yeah. He's constantly on his phone having to do this stuff. He just keeps moving. It, it, it's great. It's a great way to do that. Okay. So give some advice to people who work out a little, but would like to step it up. Um, because a lot of times I know I've been like, you know, let's say I would enter a triathlon and I had not been swimming for four or five months and I hit the pool and I, my brain says, you're supposed to be able to swim this speed. And I, you know, the older I got, I started getting injuries because I would ramp it up too quickly. So let's say someone's been moderately exercising. What's a good, like, is there a percentage of, of activity they should ramp up week over week so they don't get injured? Let's assume that moderate means three times a week and it includes some resistance training and cardio training and possibly some flexibility training in the form of yoga or just basic stretching. There are th um, four different ways to alter the program. You can alter the frequency with which you're doing it, so adding another day. You can alter the volume of exercise you're doing in a particular workout. You can exercise the length of time that you are doing, so um, and then the frequency, the intensity, duration. The, that's the time, the duration. Yeah. And then you can alter the mode of activity by introducing another mm -hmm. something. Let's say if you haven't been doing strength training with weights, you introduce that mode, can um, progressively increase your experience. Does that make Talk sense? Talk about the importance of working out with someone you know, like an accountability partner or a trainer. A buddy, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So you don't need to jump to a trainer. I mean, that's like the perfect scenario, right? But if you have a workout partner, have a buddy that goes with you, or if you can't go, hey, are you going to the gym? Check on each other. There is accountability. That's just what you said. If you're not one to work out alone, find a group fitness something. Maybe that's for you or a small group. They, you make relationships, you build relationships. The expectations you're going to be there and when you don't show up you're going to have people texting and calling like you where were you yeah it keeps you on track and then ultimately if you do find a trainer they can help you individually right do you have injuries what are your goals what are your nutrition restrictions and i mean they can really hone in and it should be progressive like you said brandon this is a four-week challenge it's probably gonna be a lot of people wanting to go all in some of you probably can but others, if you do that, you're going to get through that first week or maybe those first two days and you're going to hurt so bad. Yeah, but you <laughs> yeah. have to keep it yeah. going. You, you got to be moderate. If you've never gotten off the couch, start with 15 minutes three, four times a week. Just start there. See how your body acts. In prepping for this, I told you that I can just go out and burn calories and that has got me by. But you guys mentioned resistance training as maybe even, I don't want to say a better form of, of losing weight, but talk about resistant training. Like maybe someone's like, I'm not going to the gym. What could they do some resistance training around the house that would- Oh, I want to answer that yeah. one. Okay. We, during COVID, we did some at-home workouts using your, a broomstick, two jugs of water, cans of beans, uh, a jump rope, the crack in your sidewalk, a backpack, uh, a backpack, a backpack. In it. 
there are things that you can do. We've got a huge array of material. Um, anyhow, yes, you can use objects in your home. The stairs, you can do step ups on a, a landing, up, up, down, down. You can use it as a, a, a bench to, on which to do dips. You can use a step for a lunge platform where you're stepping backwards off of it or stepping onto it for lunges. You can use a chair for squats and dips and step ups. There's so many things you can What's do. What's a good cadence? Like, should they maybe do cardio one day and resistance the next? Or should they do a both the same day? What's a good cadence? I think it's Personal individual. Preference. My preference is I like doing interval training. I like to mix it up. Maybe choose an exercise that's cardio based, increases my heart rate a little bit. Then I'll go, you know, do some rows for my back. That allows me to recover, but I'm building lean muscle mass. And ladies, you have to lift some weights. You You're not going to get big. That's a big myth. But the more muscle we have, the leaner, the healthier, the more calories we burn all the time. It's so important. Cardio, cardio, cardio. Yeah, that's going to get your heart and lungs healthy, which is yeah. very important. But at a certain point, it's going to stop working. You're going to look the There's same. like a law of diminishing <laughs> yeah. return with cardio alone. Yeah. Let me cite an example. A couple of years ago, a client, she took a break. Of, what? No, go ahead. I took a break over the summer and she lost weight mm -hmm. because she was restricting her calories and just focusing on cardio. She lost 10 pounds and she was very happy. Mm -hmm. But we did her in body to find out how much fat yeah. she lost. She didn't lose any fat. She lost 10 pounds of hard earned muscle. And I'm going to tell you right here and now, it is difficult to build <laughs> muscle. It is hard as crap. You have to lift a lot and you have to eat a lot of good things to make that muscle grow. Do not just do cardio. You've got to lift things. You have to do that. Please. Yeah. So yeah, here's one of the my muscles little give you shape, huh? Here's one of my hacks that I learned um, that keeps me fit cardio and uh, even burns more calories after the fact. And you guys know this, it's high intensity interval yes. training, which people will call it. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a mixture of activities. High intensity to spike the heart rate and then you're lifting heavy things. You could even get the heart rate up by lifting heavy things. Shoot that up there, whether it's a kettlebell or dumbbells or or the speed at which you're doing things. There's a lot of different things. What Brandon said with that hit, that high intensity interval training, you can accomplish your fitness goals and your workout in a much shorter amount of time. Yeah, you don't, have to, yeah, you don't have to work out for two hours. You can bang out a workout in 25 to 45 minutes, right? Depending on what you're doing that day, that is very effective and very efficient. Yeah, so my so it hit doesn't training. doesn't take all day. My, my hit workouts are 20 and 30 minute workouts. And if I'm consistent with them, um, I can see my waistline shrinking mm -hmm. more so than going out and doing a 90 minute bike ride. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of, different things. Yeah. You just got to be careful with hit because they are intense. And so you can hurt yourself. You don't just jump into hit. No. Um, but well, bear in mind for those people who are getting started, it actually becomes LIT, L-I-I-T, low intensity interval training for those of you who are starting out. You don't want to be uh, crippled. You don't want to be vomiting. No. You want to be able to get derive some kind of pleasure from what you're doing, even though it might be uncomfortable. You want to get the result and feel good about it and then want to do it again. Yeah. So a quick example of that. If you're just starting, you take a brisk walk around your driveway, you come back, maybe do 10 body weight squats. Yeah. And then you go do that walk again, come back, do another strength exercise. You don't have to be doing burpees and all these crazy things you see. Higher <laughs> flipping, sledgehammer. It burpees doesn't require are the devil. Them. Burpees are the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the majority of the population agrees with you. Yeah. <laughs> My mama said burpees are the devil. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't so, do them. <laughs> all right, let's shift to our final kind of topic, and that is using some products to um, maximize results. Um, and uh, we use a line, when I say we, the, the three of us and many others use a line called Physique. It's a weight management line. It's got protein in it. It's got uh, omegas. It's got 
really a great gut health program um, wrapped in it. So why don't you guys talk about physique a little bit, maybe your favorite product in the line. You want to talk about the prebiotic? Yeah, I do. I, I like it all and I've used everything for myself. I use it. We recommended it to clients. Mm -hmm. um, Gresham will share a little bit about the fat burner because it, it does some amazing things um, if you're doing all the other components in fitness. These are tools, guys. They're taking it alone. You're going to get results, but just imagine how much more results you will get if you use these as they're intended with the things we've been talking about. Exactly. Um, but the prebiotic, it just helps the gut health. It's going to kind of keep you well, you'll be less hungry on it. I can't explain that, right? It's going to help stabilize your blood sugar. If your blood sugar is more stable, you have less of this going on, meaning you're not going to be I'm tired high. and crash or I want to eat and then, you know, you're tired afterwards. All those things working together creates a sustainable environment mm -hmm. for your goals. Um, so I do like what the, the prebiotic does. It's got some fiber in it um, yep. that helps stab uh, stabilize some things. And uh, just a little, a little, I don't want to say hack, but um, if, if you do a full scoop, if you've never used it before, I'm just going to tell you, monitor your intake because it can have a cleansing effect. In fact, if you like cleanses, I'm just going to tell you, if you do two scoops, you'll probably be around a bathroom a little bit for the day. Just I haven't been to that extent, but I did notice a significant change when I started <laughs> taking it. <No. laughs> so yes, good advice. And so, I, love pro I love the probiotic big time. Yeah. Can't explain why. I just know that life exactly. is good. Yeah. Life is good. And then the protein, the physique protein, we talked a little bit about making protein shakes. Protein shakes are amazing for meals or on the go yes. or when you feel like, oh, I'm Cook, I feel like cooking. Yeah. yeah, go on the protein. But oh, yeah, talk about it. <clears throat> well, it's it's a cornerstone if you're building a shake, obviously, because you have that macronutrient of protein covered with the protein powder, and then you can add your fruits for your carbohydrates, and then your fats in the form of some kind of oil or um, a nut butter or something, and then you have a meal. And the fizzy protein, I like, it has 18 grams of protein in it, and which is pretty darn good. For most of us, a scoop is going to be sufficient. Those of you that are more athletic, um, maybe more the weight training type, you may need a scoop and a half, two scoops, especially if you're using as a meal replacement, mm -hmm. but that's not the rule, okay? Um, so it's got a substantial amount. It's got the amino acids in it. So it's going to be very beneficial. Yep. So we are going to, I see some comments. We are going to do some recipes, guys, inside yeah. the Facebook groups. Um, whoever invited you to this tonight will get you into some of the Facebook groups that we're going to be supporting this quarantine reset in. There'll be plenty of recipes. I'll be sharing some of my recipes. Um, I, I, might, I might have to consult with you two, though, a little bit. I think I had to cut back on some of my calories in my shakes. There is, listen, making shakes, you can make some tasty shakes, but if you're adding a bunch of vegetables and a bunch of fruit and yogurts yeah. and juices and coconut water, coconut water is great, but guess what? It has sugars, it has more carbohydrates, so it can be sneaky. You think you're having a healthy shake and it's 800 calories later, you just ingest it. Yeah, it's hard, so, to, it's hard to reverse that. Yeah, and I do want to say one thing. When it comes to when you might fall off your plan, do not punish yourself by restricting yeah. the other meals. Put, put the past behind you, you get back on the plan and you keep moving forward. Do not worry about yeah. what happened. You cannot change what you just ate. You did it. Just get back on, learn from it, move forward. And give yourself grace, you guys. If you're learning and just starting out, your body's gonna hurt or you used to be this great athlete and you're just getting back, you may feel down because you're not doing or performing at that same level it's okay. <laughs> Just, it's, it's a reset, right? Blank slate, get on track, be forgiving, and just keep moving forward. So in closing, Gretchen, tell us a little about this, this fat burn. Why, why do you love it? What's oh, your, yeah. Okay. With that? Uh, I, I do not have personal experience. Just briefly, I manage my body fat 
by other means through the just the food. But I have seen some remarkable results in some clients. And Lindsay is on here and her results are crazy. She, the exercise plan that she was doing was yoga and using the um, fat burner along with the other products. And her waistline went down amazingly, yeah. but it was the visceral fat because we were tracking her through a device called an in-body and we can get a reading on visceral fat. That went down tremendously. So Lindsay, I can't cite your numbers verbatim, but I know that they were pretty remarkable. And I know you're on here. They're the amazing things for the waistline yeah. and the visceral fat. It's really pretty cool. And it does, it's not a stimulant, which no. a lot of fat burning. Speak to that because you hate that stuff. I hate the stimulation. <laughs> I'd rather just be really chill and I don't like being wired. So you will not experience that with a fat burner. It it has um a, what is it? The my palm. Like I, I don't know, whatever. It burns <laughs> fat from without making you wired. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I appreciate you guys being on here. We're going to have some fun over the next four weeks. This tonight was just kind of a way to um, give some guidance as we go in. What um, Any parting words on a four-week blitz for people to stay away from? Like, what's like a, what should they be doing and should not be doing? Just anything off the top of your head of, based on a four-week blitz? Gently and give yourself permission to be sore, but if when you are sore, you still need to get back at it. You cannot use your soreness as an excuse. Do something other than what you did that made you sore. Maybe it's just a simple walk and some stretching, but you get your butt up and you move <clears throat> and you don't make excuses. All right, don't make excuses and let yourself off the hook. Yeah, and then you don't have to go throw your fridge out, right? No. Stay away, uh, guys, the processed foods, right? The sugars, oh, yeah. the pre-made meals, there's a lot of stuff in there you don't need. But look in your fridge, look in your pantry, think about, do I have something protein? Do I have something carbohydrate? And do I have something fat? Use what you have, but be smart about it and combine them. You don't have to go to extremes to still get mm -hmm. results. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. And yeah. Honestly, I hope you all prepare your own food <laughs> and cook it to your liking. Right, right. So um, you guys, let's have some fun with this over the next four weeks. There'll be plenty of accountability partners you can jump in with in the groups. Um, I'm in. I'm, I'm going to drop some weight. My goal is 10 pounds, which I know is going to the last three or four is going to be a struggle. Um, I know, but we're going to. My real goal, I'm just going to put it out there. I haven't been under 200 pounds, and I don't know how. And you know what? I want to invite you up to do an in-body so we can mm -hmm. see how much body fat you have and how much skeletal muscle mass you have. And then we'll see how much fat you lose. Because you okay. don't want to lose your muscle, you want to lose the fat. Okay. So, All right. yep, we'll do it. I saw your scale, what, you're 212, right? Yep. It's so not that far, Brandon. No. You can do this in four weeks. I can do it. You can do I, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can do it. I, I, my goal is 10 in four weeks. Um, and to keep it off, because I really don't like being 212. I really would like 205. That, I'm good at 205. But I just want to get to 199 because I, I, I want to see that number. <laughs> so I know you two can help me. So, guys, um, reach out to these ladies if you like. They are so yeah, knowledgeable. The they're, they're also a part of the Life Vantage family. They were cornerstones in the, the launch of this thing, um, so knowledgeable with, uh, with the business as well as their business of fitness and, and health. And so thank you guys for being on and uh, look forward to your participation in the groups. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, thank you guys. guys. Thank you. And to whoever asked about rice, I don't care. Just <laughs> measure it and eat it. Okay. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs>